two, one. Hello, everybody. This is Polly and me coming to you from, well, I'm coming to, to you from the great state of uh, Texas. And I am Lauren Margulies. I am the me of Polly and me. And from Minnesota, I am. I'm Polly Warshower. I'm the Polly and Polly and me. How are things in Minnesota? Uh, very warm today. It's very nice. Very nice. So, so today ahead. we're going to discuss the great TV sitcoms uh, of all time, and we're going to make yeah sitcoms. Um, and before we do that, of course, we only have about seventy years to select from, sixty years to select from. So, I mean, there's all kinds of sitcoms, and I'll just go through a quick, not necessarily the list, but some of the the things we're facing. The early days of comedy with the I Love Lucy and all that stuff. Um, then there's the ridiculous TV comedies like Adam's Family, My Favorite Martian, Green Acres, and the ultimate Gilligan's Island. Um, there's workplace comedies uh, like uh, Community, Office, and all that. The Mary big, Tyler Moore show. Mary Tyler Moore, excellent. Another workplace comedy. Cheers, if you want to use that one. That one really is kind of a different buddy picture. Then there's the bizarre and cutting edge like South Park and Family Guy, Barry, yeah, yeah Barry, which is about a hitman and a and a theater class. Yes, and Henry course, Winkler. Henry Winkler made his comeback and, and very grateful. And then um, the Good Place about heaven or hell, depending on which way you look. Um, so that that's kind of it. I mean, then there's buddy pictures, the rest of it. So uh, with that in mind, we're and talking we, about. Yes, and we we love comedy 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 all right so lauren why don't you go ahead we're gonna what are we gonna do three total yeah i'll all give right. my first and you give it and maybe you're gonna get to go very good okay my first all in the family a cutting edge comedy for its day i remember my going over to my grandparents house and all the men in the family come eight o'clock or whatever it was, would rush into the back room and huddle around the TV while the women were in the front room going, that's just disgusting. That's just, they're just, I, it's just disgusting what they're watching. And all you would hear is from the back room, these guys laughing hysterically. Well, and, I, and, and a lot of themes before it's time, a lot of cutting edge themes, race and a lot of deals like that that they did. When Archie Bunker kissed Sammy Davis Jr. Brilliant. 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 A, a moment in television history. I agree. That's one of my favorites, too. Um, you know, yeah, I've got a lot of favorites, but, you know, you have to boil it down to three shows. So I'm yeah. going to give you all in the family. I'm going to take MASH. No, um, I was going to take MASH. I'm sorry. Stop. I got it. I got it. I got so it. MASH, to me, may be the greatest television show the greatest sitcom, although it had it covered so much more. Uh, there were serious items. There were uh, tragic items. There were funny items. Clinger in a dress. Uh, Harry, you know, Henry, what's his name? Henry, Colonel Henry Potter? Colonel Potter, right. yeah. Colonel Potter with his horse. And I'll tell you, the, the very last episode, you know, which was watched by the, the most number of people ever, has a moment that I remember crying at. It's uh, David Ogden Stiers, who played... Colonel Winchester, this pompous asshole, has this moment where he's trying to teach the Korean orchestra how to play a very simple Schubert, it's, I think it's Schubert or Brahms, a very simple quintet, and they, just to make sure they stay there, don't go back, they pretend that they can't play that well. So he gets all frustrated and, and throws up his hands, and then finally the Koreans come in and say, we, we're taking these guys back to North Korea. And it's this wonderful gesture as they're being hauled away to probably to their deaths they play on the back of a military truck a beautiful version using korean instruments of this quartet and just winchester cries and i remember crying too and then of course the, the whole ending so mash is is definitely on one of the top of my list and mash was written by and created by my uncle larry gelbart right my good, uncle from the good friend of, of the yep. family Good friend of uh, good friend of your father's and good friend of uh, of Alan Alden. So, all right. 
Who was a good friend of my father's? No, Galbart was your father's cousin, I think. No, he was my uncle. Oh, your uncle, sorry. But I thought Alan Alda was great friends with Galbart when they were creating the show. Oh, they might have been. And then Alan Alda took over writing the episodes of MASH after uh, Larry stopped. Right. Alan and, Alda continued. Right. He wrote some. There were a lot of other outside writers. All right. You're, that's, yeah. So that's one each. Yeah. Well, you threw me for a loop there because MASH was my number two. So I'm going to go into my number three and then have to come back. But uh, my number three will be Seinfeld. A show about nothing. And again, cutting edge, because they even did that episode about masturbation, which was huge when they did it. That was big stuff. They didn't know if it would get aired or not. So and I completely... I say, I say Seinfeld. All right. And I completely disagree. I never liked the show. I've started to watch it a little bit in syndication. It is a show about nothing. And the George character is obnoxious, and uh, Elaine is obnoxious. These are not pleasant people. Kramer is irritating. I just, I never liked the show, and I thought it was hokey and, and self pretentious. Although today we have to, you know, we're, we're kind of doing these in a timeless way. Uh, ben Stiller passed away recently, who was, of course, uh, uh, George's no, Jerry father. Stiller. Or Jerry, Jerry Stiller, sorry. Uh, Ben's father. So. Yes. All right, so that's so your fun. so that's your number two. That's my number two. Okay, then I'm going to say my number two is Thirty Rock. Um, very clever show, written and created by Tina Fey. They laugh a minute. The characters are brilliantly sketched out. The uh, colorful commentary on on her own industry uh, made it even worth more watching. Uh, this whole parody of of uh, of NBC Studios and. Alec Baldwin is the brilliant manager of the department, and all of these great cameos that people came. So that's my number two. Great writing, great ability. By the way, I'll tell you this. While I was staying with yeah. you many, many years ago, I binge watched about four hours of these. Uh, we were supposed to go to dinner, and I said, not now, I'm writing something. I really wasn't. I was binge watching 30 Rock because I'd never seen them. So that's my number two. It's a good show. It's a good show. And Tina Fey really showed herself as a lead comic actress. She's brilliant in it. So, yes, I agree. Okay, well, then, uh, since I can't have MASH, since you already took it, I'm going to go even uh, more present, and I'm going to go with the Big Bang Theory. Another ensemble cast. Uh, again, cutting edge because it took the nerd community, which was sort of a community that uh, used to get a hard time, and it made them popular. And, and uh, Jim Parsons, who plays Sheldon, who made really being a nerd popular and played it brilliantly, is just one of my favorite modern time comedic people. So that's my that's my number three. And Big that's Bang and that's another one on my list of I just hate it. I don't get it. Uh, to me, it's not funny. The characters are badly drawn. And why anybody would like Gosh. listen? If, why anybody would like Sheldon Cooper is beyond me. I even looked at a couple of the episodes of Young Sheldon, and I'm thinking these, these parents should have you know sent him away to boarding school. It would have straightened him out. So you know. That's, by the way, on the list of my worst choices, which includes The Big Bang, Cheers, Cosby, Seinfeld, Honeymooners, Friends, The Dick Van Dyke Show, and Frasier. Definitely, in my book, do not deserve to be on the list. They are for specific audiences. I just don't like it. That's my own opinion, and I'm sticking to it. And I will give you your entitled to your opinion, even if it's wrong! Thank you. All right. So my... Was that your, th that was your third? That was third. That was my right, And I have to give, uh, I have to give homage to uh, two of the cartoon ones, South Park and Family Guy, um, both of which I think are brilliant yeah. satires written by very clever, irreverent uh, comedians that are allowed to do things with cartoons that no human could. I have to tell you again, the Family Guy was introduced to me many, many years ago by an Englishman who came here uh, for me to have him tour parts of Chicago, New York, and so forth. I'd never heard of the show. And again, um, 
he downloads a bunch of them and puts them on a, in those days, an old DVD. I couldn't, I couldn't understand why I'd never heard of this brilliant satire of America. So that was my- Family Guy is hysterical. Family just, Guy is hysterical. And again, everybody jumps on the bandwagon to play a, a, a minor part, uh, you know, to be a cameo yeah. voice. So, all right, yeah. so those are That's our three. McFarland. Yeah, Seth MacFarlane is just a brilliant writer. He's also sort of a triple threat because he's a writer, he's an actor, and he's got a operatic singing voice, if you've ever heard him perform. Yeah. He's, he's got a Broadway a voice. Singer. I don't know if it's an operatic, but it's a Broadway voice, yeah. Yeah. Those uh, are our three. Uh, I got to give honorable mention to the most ridiculous comedies uh, which okay. were The Addams Family, Green Acres, and My Favorite Martian. I, oh, loved, my I loved My Favorite Martian. I just thought yeah. it'd be so cool to have an Ooh. alien, and then he disappears. Very clever. So yeah. any other long shots for you? Uh, well, there, there's a few. A few on the list that you didn't care for, uh, but... It's, it's ironic that some of them that you didn't care for were actually spinoffs on others that you didn't care for. Um, but um, I'd, say, I'd say probably uh, Frasier and Cheers would be in my other that I thought. Now, Frasier, I thought was really intelligently written, but yes, for a more specific crowd. Um, Cheers, I think, was a little more the everyman show, and that was supposed to be the concept. Uh, but there's there's just so many, it really is hard to just narrow it down. Um, and I like that you brought in Family Guy, because some of this animated stuff, like The Simpsons and American Dad, I mean, some of these are really well done shows, and they just happen to be animated, but they're not for kids. No, and uh, I think that's kind of where we're going. Now, of course, our list is totally incomplete when it comes to modern stuff on HBO and uh, oh, yeah. Netflix. I mean, one of the yeah. best ones ever is Veep, the one created by Julia Louis-Dreyfus, oh. which hardly anybody sees unless they've got uh, HBO or Showtime or any of those others. Um, yeah, so Veep is really good. Veep was, it ran for like, what, eight years? So, um, yeah. And, and... And the Larry David show. Yes, which again, he's another, another guy, another guy who totally irritates me. I don't like anything he does. Um, curb your, well, curb your enthusiasm wasn't his, was it? Curb your enthusiasm. Yeah, curb was your that enthusiasm. His? Okay. Uh, yeah. He rubs me the wrong way, like Seinfeld does. So, you know, obviously, comedy is a very subjective thing. Like you said, some of them are blue collar comedies, some of them are white collar comedies, some are written across the middle. I know that some people will not watch South Park because it's so irreverent and so what they call anti-religious, and he pokes fun at everybody. Yeah, they yeah. excuse me, Parker and uh, Parker and Trey Parker and Sen or somebody Sen and Parker. I don't know whatever the hell their names are. Yeah, okay, right. but yeah, it is it is a little subjective, and these are just our opinions, obviously, and sort of our choices, but. You know, if you have other choices, feel free to write them. In the comments below. Yeah, give us your opinion. We'd love to hear it. And we'd yeah. love to hear your rationale as to why, if you I think did. it's a edgy choice. Right. I mean, we mentioned a lot, even though I threw out a bunch of them. Many of those are on everybody's favorite list. Um, yeah. They, and by the way, just in conclusion, the old formula was, when they typed up a script, you should have three page, three jokes per page. That was the old formula for sitcoms, uh, which started way back with I Love Lucy and Dick Van Dyke, and all those early shows. Um, so yeah. anyway, but it's always character driven. That seems to be the, the key, the secret. If you look at Parks and Rec or Community, they're all character driven. And it's the wonderful characters that come to life on these TV shows that provide the humor. So yeah. Well, that's it for today, I think. Yep, that's it from Dallas, Texas. And that's it from little Sleepy Eye, Minnesota. So we will talk soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.